Hey guys, it's going to sweep it in your face there. Hey guys, how are you? Back with another live video this week. Um, so in this video, I'm going to show you how I make it's a unicorn horn. It's this popular unicorn cake that's doing the rounds where it's the horn and the ears and the eyes. And I know there's so many cake tutorials for this video already on YouTube, but if you already know how to make a cake, then I'm just going to show you how to do the horn and the eyes and the ears, and then you're good to go. Um, yeah, a lot of people said, my goodness, she talked so much <laughs> last week. I do talk a lot. So I will put in the comments, if you're catching this on the replay, I will put in the comments below uh, when the actual tutorial starts because last week it was 10 minutes into the video by the time the tutorial starts. But my children are in the garden. It's a beautiful day. So I'm just going to get stuck straight into this. I'm not going to, hi, Baron, how are you? Oh, you're cute. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I always just get so nervous doing these lives. I don't know why, because whenever I'm here doing a live, it's fine. You know, there's no, these aren't scary or anything. But um, yes, there's me. I'm going to start rambling again. I'm going to start rambling. Yes. So I will put in the comments when actually, because we're already a minute in and I haven't started making this topper, these toppers yet. So I will put in the comments when the tutorial actually starts. Also, if you are catching this on the replay and you want it sped up a little bit, there's a little settings function. It looks like a wee wheel on your screen and you can speed up so you can set it to set the video to go faster if you want to. It's so weird looking at myself. I never watched my videos back. So this is really weird. And this is probably a really bad time to go live as well because it's like well, it's quarter to two here in the afternoon and I think the Americans, Baron, I don't know what time it is there with you, but you guys will just be getting up and all the Australians, they'll all be going to bed. So um, I'm going to just get stuck straight into this, guys. Um, and as I say, this is really, this topper is really, really easy to make. It's so straightforward. And this is just how I do it. I sell cake toppers online if you're new here. I'm Amanda, I sell cake toppers online and I have done for about, well, since 2012, well, however long ago that was. And most of the toppers I make are quite detailed. There would be figures and stuff. And these are some of the orders that I do here. And these ones, the one last week, the bow, it was really straightforward. And this one is really straightforward as well. I've had a couple of people say to me, you know, if you're selling these, why are you showing people how to make them? And I suppose, you know, to some people that seems really weird. You know, why would I show you how to make something if I'm wanting to sell it? And I just, I suppose for me, I'm here to try and help you guys. So I'm not really worried about whether this affects my sales online or not. It won't affect my sales online because I think people that buy the cake toppers aren't the people that are going to make them. They're two totally different audiences. And if there's anything that I can do to help you guys, um, let me know. If there's any particular topper that you would like me to make or create, let me know. These lives are a way of me keeping in contact with you over the summer. Like I said, it's a beautiful day. And I don't want to be stuck inside editing a video. And these lives seem to be a really good way to keep in touch with you. I can create my orders and show you how it's done and chat with you as I go and upload the video. And that's just a simple way for me to keep it during the summer. So I have rambled on now for four minutes. So let's get stuck into making this. I am going to move this camera now. So I'm gonna place you here. Let's see, this is better now than last week, I think already. So, um, right, so to make this, I'm using just some white fondant. I'm also gonna use some silver edible dust. I'll put links in the description below for everything that I'm using to make this cake topper. I have a knife and a cake decorating knife and also oh my goodness look at the state of this brush <laughs> but this is the brush that I use to do my colors and stuff with 
also going to need a non-stick ruling pin as well. And what else did I think of there? Yes, you're going to need a skewer to support the horn. So let's get started. I'm going to start by making the actual horn. So I'm going to put some of this, um, it's just a little bit of uh, vegetable shortening in my hands and it just stops everything from sticking. Let me know guys what you think of these um, kind of cake decorate videos, whether they are a little bit long or not, I don't know, but I like to chat while I'm making. So it's, I do enjoy making these and chatting as I go along, but um, they might be a bit long for you. Last week's video was 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, okay, so I'm gonna move this non-stick mat here, okay. Alrighty. So as I say, I will have links in the description below for everything that I'm using here. So this is just white fondant. Now you could mix a little bit of um, gum paste in, or turn this into gum paste. You could mix a little bit of, uh, oh goodness, I, the name has gone straight out of my head. The powder, I will put it in the description, which will make this stronger as well. As I say, it is quite warm here, so it's not as firm as I would like it to be. And if you're having that trouble, you could make it out of modeling paste. So to start out, you're gonna take a ball of your white fondant and you're just gonna roll it into a larger ball. Then you're gonna use your hands to create kind of like a teardrop shape. And you're probably better doing this on the board and that'll give it a good even side all around. So you're just going to keep rolling this. There are lots of different ways that you can create unicorn horns. I'm just going to get that little bit of um, out of that there. So there are lots of ways that you can make these. You can make them by taking two pieces of fondant and twisting them together. But I find this to be the easiest way to make these. Um, so there we have your kind of um, teardrop shape. I'm going to take a knife and we're going to cut this, I would say, around here. Okay, so I'm going to measure that just to let you guys know how long that is. So this is, see, that's five inches, okay, so um, you could make it bigger or smaller, it's up to you. So we're just gonna leave this onto a sponge and I don't have a sponge, so just give me one wee second. Hello here, I'm just getting a sponge ready. Okay, so I'm gonna take my sponge. So that's another must have that you need. So we're gonna just move this onto the sponge because it's still quite soft at the minute. Uh, another thing that you're gonna need to create the ears. So yes, we're gonna go on to making the ears now. To create the ears, I use a heart, um, a heart cutter. So I just find this is the easiest way to make the ears. So I'm gonna roll another piece of your fondant and I'm gonna roll it out. So it's a few millimeters thick, quite thick. Okay. And then you're gonna cut out two hearts. Okay, so with the bottom of these hearts, I'm just going to trim off that tiny part where it's very rounded because we're not going to need that. Okay, and we're just going to lift those, set them onto your sponge. Now, if you notice that there is a little bit of your fondant around the outside that isn't overly neat. You could just take your knife and just neaten the edges of that. And then we're gonna place it over onto the sponge with our horn as well. Okay, I'm just gonna neaten the edges of this one. Okay, so now we're gonna roll out another piece of our fondant and we're gonna cut out two more hearts. Now this piece here, we're gonna roll it nice and thin. This is gonna be the inside part of our heart. 
So roll it out really, really thin. Believe it or not, I've never made one of these cakes. <laughs> They're like the most popular cake out there, but I've never made one. In fact, um, it's actually a friend of mine. I had made the horn and the ears set for her. Um, so that's kind of how I, that's normally how I start selling things. It's if I'm asked to make it, but um, like this is just so easy and so straightforward. Okay, so you're going to do the same. You're going to just trim the bottom of these ones as well. You can trim a little bit more off these ones. And I'm going to, goodness, I'm going to need to take a bit of <laughs> kitchen tile here. And I'm using this as my tripod. So let's see, what way did I have this? Okay, I think you're still... Okay, you can still see me. Sorry, guys. That's better. Okay. So I always use a piece of um, kitchen towel whenever I'm doing the uh, edible dust because it's just so messy and it can go everywhere. And I'm going to use this particular one here, but any edible dust will do. And you can do this in gold or any color that you want. So I'm just going to lift these two pieces and set them onto my kitchen tile. And then we're going to just go in with our edible dust. So I really wish I had a better, <laughs> better brush. I really need to get another brush. I actually do have another brush, which is far better, but I'm afraid I was using it to create a hungry caterpillar yesterday and I'm afraid that I didn't get all the green off it. So you just dip that into your edible dust and give it a wee tap just to tap off the excess. And then you're going to go in in dabbing motion. So you do want to go in in lines because it's, it's going to just create lines. So just go in and dab that color on. I find with dabbing the color on, it gives you far more even finish than just going in swirling it around you can always go over it at the end um i'll show you in a wee second but i find initially to get that first coat on you're better just dabbing it on and if you're tuning in don't forget to say hello and let me know where you're watching from it's always really exciting to um hear where you guys are from and if you're watching it in the replay, say hi in the comments. I always love chatting with you in the comments down below as well. Thank you for the little thumbs up. I see a wee thumbs up there. Thank you. So I'm just dabbing this on. There's me saying not to rub it in and I'm too busy chatting. And then I start rub <laughs> rubbing it in. I don't know if you can notice. So this one where I did do the lines, you can totally see the difference, I think. Um, where this one isn't just as good, the finish just isn't as good, too busy chatting. It's as well I know how to work with distractions. Uh, I remember when I first started cake decorating, I, I used to have to, if the kids came in while I was doing anything, I used to have to stop what I was doing. But now you just have to keep motoring on, whether they're distracting me or not, or chatting to me. Most of the time they'll be in, my wee boy gets up, I get up really early and he would be an early riser, my 10 year old. And uh, he would be in chatting away while I'm working, which is good. So now at the end, you can always go in and give it a wee quick rub over. So that's the inside of the ears for your unicorn. So we're going to do the, um, let's see what this horn is like here at the minute. Has it firmed up a little bit? It has. Okay. So I always like to do that um, just to let it firm up a wee bit before I start working with it too much. And it just, it makes it so much easier to work with rather than fiddling around and it's sliding all over the place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little knife or you can take your other regular knife if you prefer and I'm just going to create some little lines so if you imagine that this is going to be in an upside down V shape so I'm going to just make some indentations here initially and that's just going to show me where I'm going to place my 
my lines so you can see there the important thing is not to hold it or handle it too much because you don't want it to lose its shape. Easier said than done, says you. So now you're going to just tilt it onto its side and you're going to just carry that little line over like that. And do the same with each little line that you've created. Okay, and then do the same with the other side. Okay, now I don't bother doing the back. You can do the back if you want, but um, I just don't really see the point in creating the lines at the back, plus it might mess around with the front. So you can see what that's looking like now. That's what you should have. So now we're gonna use a skewer. And we're gonna just place this skewer up the center. Now this part can be a bit dodgy because sometimes it can poke through and then I have to make the whole thing all over again. So fingers crossed it doesn't happen this time. But I'm just going to take this barbecue skewer and I'm just going to hold it, gently place it up the center. Now you want to try and put this as far up your cake topper as you possibly can because you need it to support it. Now I can feel that getting to the top and that's perfect because you know it's going to be well supported. The last thing you want is your horn to break off on your cake. So I'm just going to shape the top of that into a little point. Okay, so here we have our horn. I'm going to just put that back on the sponge again. And then we're going to finish our ears. So we have these two pieces here. And I'm just going to put a little bit of water on here. And we're going to transfer these over. Okay, so you're not going to place this directly on top. You're going to place it slightly down. You can see why. And that's just going to make it look more like an ear. Do the same with the other side as well. Okay. And place that on there too. Try and not do what I just done and make it uneven. There you go. There. Okay. So now you've got this little overlap at the bottom here, and we're just gonna trim that off. And you know, this is so, um, these are just so quick and easy to make, you know. I don't really see the point in buying. I know you can buy molds and stuff, but I definitely far prefer making things from hand because they're, I think they've just got that little personal touch as well. And I think the molds can be a lot smaller, whereas with these, you get to dictate what size they're going to be. If I was doing this for a cake, I would probably do this the day, the night before, so that they're all nice and hard for you to place onto your cake. Okay, so you can leave those like that. And you could, even at this stage, place a little cocktail stick up through the center. I prefer to fold them over so they've got a little bit of a crease in them. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna lift this and show you what I'm gonna do. So, I mean, that looks okay now. So if you're a beginner or you're not really, or you're stuck for time or whatever, you can just leave it like that. But I just think this makes all the difference. So I'm going to, hopefully you can see here, in the center, I'm going to give it a little pinch. And I'm going to be quite rough with it because you do want to catch and that. And I just think that looks so much better. And if I place that on like that, you can let it dry. And I'm going to show you the back of it because you've pinched it. The back of it acts as a support so you can actually, you know, you're not having to put a cocktail stick inside it. If I can avoid putting a cocktail stick or a barbecue skewer inside things, I do because 
you do always panic if someone is going to be eating it. And even though you do warn people that there is a skewer inside, it's always better if you can get away without having to do it. So if I was putting this on the cake, I would use a wee bit of water, edible glue, or a bit of royal icing, and that would be good to go. So we're going to do the same with this other ear now. I'm going to fold this over. And then... And you can see how symmetrical they are, and I think they look really cute as well. So I'm just going to neaten up the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to set those on our sponge here as well. Now we're going to take, we're going to do the eyes now. So uh, let's see, I'm going to take a tiny wee piece here of my fondant again. So a little ball, and we're going to cut this in half. Okay. So these are going to be like eyelashes, sort of where the eye is closed over a wee bit. So you're going to just roll this into a ball and then roll it out into kind of like a another teardrop shape. Okay. I hope you can see what, what I'm doing here. So you're going to keep it thicker at one end and thinner at the other. And we're going to just keep working with that. Okay. So once you get it to this stage, we're going to make it look like a upside down U. Okay. We're going to, and then this little part here is going to be where the eyelashes flick out. So then we're going to turn this part up and we're going to push down with our finger. Okay, so now we're going to take a knife and cut a line down there. So you can see this is the shape of the eyelash now, and we're going to create three little eyelashes on this side here. So I hope my hand doesn't block, and I hope you can see here what I'm doing. So you're going to go in at this top corner here, and we're going to create one eyelash. I really hope that you can see this. And then we're gonna take out that little center part. Okay, like that. Then where you have this V shape, we're gonna go and create another eyelash. So I'm gonna see, can I make this any closer here? So you can, I'm gonna actually hold this like this. Oops, it's gonna fall. Right, is that focusing? Maybe I should save it. <laughs> oh, it's going to fall over. Okay, I hope you can see better there. So where you've got this little V shape, we're going to go in now and create another eyelash like that. And then down at the bottom, we're going to go downwards for this one. Okay, oh, that was good. So I'm going to take this off here and see if you can see. So that's what it should be looking like now. It's, this camera seems to follow. Uh, is it going to focus? Come on. Come on. There. So you can see that now. So this bottom corner here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this by holding this. You're going to just flick that up like that. Okay. At this stage, you can sort of play around with the shape of your eyelash. So I'm going to just move that wee bottom corner slightly up. And you can see that gives you a nice wee shape of an eyelash. And then what we'll do, we'll do the exact same with this one. And it's going to be another eyelash on the other side. And then all be left for us to do will be to do our, um, is to colour it in the silver. So I'm going to do... The next one, it probably would have been a good idea for me to, <laughs> um, I should have learned my lesson from last week, but I thought the paper towel tripod worked out really well. <laughs> I'm doing a paper towel tripod this week, guys. Okay, so we're going to do the same and I'm going to try and mimic the shape of this one. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing and then press down on that edge. Okay, 
do the same with the line, straight down. Maybe press down a little bit more. And then you're going to go in at the top. Here, take that wee bit out. Go in again. And then go down towards the corner at the bottom. Okay. And then, oops, we're going to just turn these lashes upwards. Okay, so that's your two eyelashes then. Hi, it's so good to see you. I don't know how to pronounce your name, but hello. <laughs> so that's your two eyelashes. So now what we're going to do is you don't want to mess about with these too much because, um, you know, they're quite soft at this stage and you don't want them to lose their shape. So we're just going to be really careful and place them onto the sponge just until we can get our, our horn. And hopefully by the time we get our horn colored, they will be ready for us to color. Okay, so we're gonna put our paper towel down again. And our horn, so let's move this. Let's see where our, okay. I'm gonna move this here. Right, so we're gonna do exactly the <laughs> Oh dear, dear. Let's see. I'm going to support this with this. I should stop that. I suppose because I'm holding this. I'm expecting a lot of this little paper tile holder here to be fair. Right. Stay still. It's going to keep falling. Um, oh, okay. I'm going to have to try and do this with one hand. This is dedication for you guys. So <laughs> I can move this out of the way now. Okay, so I'm gonna be holding this now with one hand. So this is probably gonna be really dodgy and shaky. Okay, so I'm holding this with one hand. Now I'm gonna take that um, silver edible dust again and just gonna tap. And you're gonna do the exact same thing. Hi Natalie, how are you? So you're gonna just dab, dab, dab. So this is really dodgy because I'm having to hold this with one hand, but I do wanna I do wanna abandon you again to go and get some other handmade tripod. So again with just with the dabbing motions, we're gonna color the horn and with using the silver. And you can, if you prefer, what you could do is you could um, make the horn and the eyelashes up the night before and then color them the next day when they're not just as soft, especially the eyelashes, they can be hard to color, you know, if they're really soft. So if I wasn't doing a video here and showing you how to do it, I probably would leave them maybe in a, even an hour or so before I color them. But I just wanted to show you how to do it. So we'll do it all together here. Do you know what be, I would love to do? But because you guys are all over the world, I would love to do a live where we all make something together. I just think that would be so cool if I, you know, was able to say to you, I'm great, Natalie, it's a sunny day today, so I am dying to get out into the garden. We've bought some new plants and want to get get them planted with the kids. So do you know what I'm going to have to do? I can't turn that over because um, I don't want to, I don't want to wreck the, the front of this, so we'll have to do that part off camera. But you're just going to do the back of it as well. Because I'm holding this with this hand, I can't do that. But do you think that's a good idea? I would just love to do that. I'm just thinking, how would I, you know, how would we organize that? But I just think that would be so cool to say we all made uh, even like something simple, like a little ladybug or, and we all made it together. And I told you beforehand what tools and stuff. We could have a cake decorating, cake topper party here. 
So yeah, oh, I'm glad you think that's a good idea. If you're watching this in the replay and you think that's a good idea, let me know and we'll see if we can get a live cake decorating tutorial and that way we could all be making something together. So now I'm just gonna move these eyelashes over and we're gonna do the exact same with the eyelashes. Where are you watching from, Natalie? Okay, so we're gonna just do the same, dab, 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 dab. And because these are soft, they might change shape a little bit, but I can fix that in a second. Uh, and I find doing this, rather than painting the color on, I think this gives it a nicer finish. It's really hard to find good metallic colored edible paints. Um, yeah especially in the silver. There's a really good gold one. A lovely lady that buys toppers from me told me about a gold one, which is amazing, but I've yet to find a good silver edible paint. So we just work with what we've got and I find this gives a better finish. So you can see that they've changed shape a little bit there. So I'm gonna sort that out now. What I'm gonna do is place everything now onto my sponge. So I'm just gonna move this over here and place everything onto the sponge. Okay, so there's the, the horn. And this just gives you an idea then as to what it's gonna look like on your cake. And that way, you know, before you decide to put it on your cake if you want to play about with it. You can. So that would be your ears would maybe be there, but keep it there for now. Well, your ears, so your horn would be up here if this was on the cake and your ears would be here. And then you've got your eyes. So that gives you an idea as to what it would look like. Now, how quick and easy was that? Um, yeah, so this is like the, and I've been chatting, and because I've been chatting, it probably has taken me longer than it normally should, but that's just my feel safe way as to how to make a unicorn horn, eyes and ears. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will hopefully be back with another live cake decorating video for you next week. If there's anything you want me to create, let me know in the comments below. And it's been so lovely hanging out with you here. Um, yeah, I don't want to just cut you off and say bye-bye, but the sun is beckoning me. Uh, I hope you're all well. Make sure you say hello in the comments and I will get chatting to you in the comments below or next week on live. Thanks guys. Bye bye.